What is up, guys? This is the Adventurous Podcast. I'm Kyle. He's B Mac, and today we got my boy Trey from Impact Wrestling. Um, super stoked to have him on. We're gonna talk horror movies, a little about the business, uh, cause I'm not super hip, but he's gonna learn us some things. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna get into it, and then we're gonna wrap it up with yay or nay, like we always do. So, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm chilling, bro. I'm quarantining in my room, going on what feels like nine years straight. Um, <laughs> that was the longest march of my life, <laughs> dude. I've I literally I've been working since because I'm essential and I'm there every day, and I've only been off since Saturday, and it's the most boring three days ever. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just sitting here, like I, I don't know how people are doing this for the two weeks. I'm already bored. I can't, I can't imagine how rich people are doing it, but yeah, I'm thriving. I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what sucks is I was on Instagram earlier. And I can't. Who was it? Uh, I can't remember. Irrelevant anyway. But this is this dude was famous. Had you know he's got uh, a mansion, uh, basketball court, and yeah, this fucking pool and. He's, he was chopping at a coconut, and he was just like, he's like, man, this is just, what a, what a time to reflect. I don't know about for you guys, but for me, this has been, this has been a, uh, you know, a real a real moment of uh, clarity. You know, I'm, I'm able to sit back and think about all the things I'm truly, absolutely thankful for. And I'm like, because you don't got to do shit. What do you yeah. mean? This yeah. is vacation for you, yeah, bro. Right. Because like, he he's talking about how everyone needs to appreciate this time the way he is. I'm like, give me a house like yours. Yes. Give me an uh, axe like the one that you're chopping that coconut with. And hell, give me that coconut, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it off. <laughs> you keep, man, if everyone was living like that and not appreciating it, sure, I understand your message. But there are people out here that have, like, Nothing, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. Like, and people are pissing me off with it. Yeah, with companies are giving me no love. Of this, no, this quarantine sucks because not everybody can get around yeah. and you know what I'm saying make make way of this. Oh yeah, it's tough. A I'm lot starting of people to don't have it. the health to deal with this either. No. Yeah. Or the I access agree. to uh, Netflix. <laughs> Dude. But yeah, no. All jokes aside, man, it's it's weird out here. Uh, we talked about. I mean, obviously, we do sports and. It's, you know, there's obviously nothing to talk about as far as that goes because of how weird it is. And we don't know when it's ever going to get back to any normalcy because, you know, if it, if it starts to regress and people just start mingling again, it could get fucking weird again, you know? Like, yeah, man. Just one, all it takes is one person. And then, I mean, those people are literally on top of each other in those, like, football stadiums. I mean, I'm sure you see it at uh, the wrestling, man. Some of those venues are probably small and yeah. they try and stuff as many people in there as they can. And uh, today on the news live, I, haven't, I didn't see anything online, but I, like I watched it live on the news. Ohio put an order out that if you leave the state or anything like that, that you have to do a 14 day quarantine. Before so I'm that. leaving. Uh, yeah, and I'm leaving in two days to go to Tennessee. So when yeah. I get home, I got to just isolate my room because I live with my dad. Yeah. He's older. So I don't want to do anything to jeopardize him, even though I mean, like that in itself is doing it. But right. luckily, they're, they're doing a lot of things to keep everyone safe and make sure everyone's protected and cleanly while we're there so i just hope for the best really because these are trying times man for sure yeah they are i mean you work at a pharmacy man i can only imagine like you've already had people in your store get get hit with cases of it right yeah we, we have one person luckily um they were actually out of work whenever they got it so they didn't have it while they were there and they were out for like a full 10 days and then they got their positive test back on the 13th day so it's like man they haven't been there but i mean it's still it's still not fun i mean it's just having to go to work every day it's like man this dude's coughing yeah i need you to stay away yeah that's crazy my uh that's really crazy like the more confirmed cases that happen, the more real it seems, especially like in Toledo, yep. because right. like, it doesn't seem like anything that like well, it's like you see it on the news and you're just like, yeah, the, this is it's there's just the, the news blowing it up like they do everything, and then like you, it's something as close as to what you're just saying, like you worked with someone and my uh, my oldest brother, his mother, uh, she she uh, she has it, so yeah, like that that at home for me like wow like this is real bro it's crazy 
It really is. I mean, it's just, and I think it's the thing of not knowing. Like yesterday, um, I had a migraine, and the whole time I'm sitting there like checking my temperature every like 10, 15 minutes. I'm like, yo, do I have a fever? Is this it? I feel that completely for like half a second last night. I smoked these oil cartridges and stuff like that, dude. And sometimes they like mess with my throat. And last night I had like this weird drip in my throat. And I was like, is this the start of my death story? (laughs) This is it. This is it. I feel like I got a lot of bad karma coming for me. And it might start with COVID-19. Let's get into uh, you in the ring a little bit. Just to uh, kind of lighten the mood, you know. Feel that. So, for people that don't know or haven't seen you uh, perform, how would you describe your style in the ring? It's like to someone who has maybe seen wrestling but hasn't seen you. To someone that, because uh, you know, that's that's a like broader question than it used to be. Because it used to be, if you've seen wrestling, that means you saw WWE, and, right? Like, only that. Now, like, there's independent. Like, wrestling's all over mm-hmm. the internet and stuff now. So. I, I would always just tell someone, like, it's kind of what... I try to be like Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel character. And he, like... In a lot of his action, dude, he's doing pro wrestling moves on right. dudes and hitting yeah. her around <laughs> head scissors and stuff like that. And I always pop seeing that in, uh, in the movies. So I always just tell people I try to be like Spider-Man when I'm in the ring. That's a, and then, uh, that's a dope, like... I could see that, like now that you said yeah. it. After I've seen you, like you just—I mean, it just makes sense. Like you just—and it looks Spider-Man, like where you just like fell over, and it's like you like dodge like a clothesline or something like that. And I'm like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Just fall over because he's not gonna hit you. Or <laughs> if you watch any other wrestling match, they'll either take it or hit him with like a—I don't know. I could see it. Like it just made sense where it was like quick improv where it, it doesn't look like the normal kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. Like now that you said it, um, I was like, "Oh yeah, damn, that's a really good comp." Because I was trying to think when I watched a couple of them. Like the name that came to my mind was like a Rey Mysterio kind of thing. Um, but then, like now that you said, it, I'm like, "Nah, I don't." I, I see more of the Spider Man than that because, like you said, like just some of the things are the like, houses are so improv and so quick. And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that makes way more sense." Dude, I, I, like, I never got into comics or anything like that, but when Sony dropped that first Spider-Man movie when I was a kid, I Bro, fell in yes. love with Spider-Man. I, know I just wholeheartedly, and I pretended like it was always that way. <laughs> but it was. Did you see, did you see that, uh, Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah. Bro, that movie's fire. That's like... I love that. Yeah. It's still on Netflix. It's so good. Um, so, you were talking a little bit about, like, you know, it's kind of a broad question because everybody only knows, or used to only know, you know, WWE style wrestling. Obviously, when we came up, that's kind of what it was. But how how dope is it to kind of see the business change as you've been in it, where it's more than just one brand as far as just, like, just the WWE. Obviously, you're with Impact now. Um, and then, like, AEW, I know, is kind of on the come up. And just talk about that a little bit, like, how you feel about, like, seeing it evolve. Um, I, it's really cool for me now. I, I don't know what it would be like being a child and watching it because, like, when I was a kid, I I knew about WCW and stuff like that. And I remember right. when Teen Impact first started, I knew what that was. And I never wanted to give anything else a chance because I was just like, WWE is WWF and WWE is where it's at for me. That's right. all I wanted to watch. And cool. so. But now, because I, I've wrestled for so many different places, I couldn't, you know, like, I, I just, I love wrestling in a different way than I did before. So from from where I sit now, I think it's amazing. Uh, because fans, you like, you got Monday Night Raw, mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday Night Impact, which is where I'm at, and uh, Access TV, 8 p.m. There you go. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, man, plug yeah. it, plug it. You know what I'm saying? And then AEW is on Wednesday night. And then Thursday, you got... Uh, SmackDown? The, no, Earth. SmackDown's back to Fridays, okay. I think. But uh, Thursday is... Um, there's independent shows that like are always streaming. Like I know one place beyond, they do a live stream on Thursdays and stuff like that. Or maybe it, it could be... I believe it's Thursday. Um, but... So there's more wrestling to watch now than there's ever been. And then, like... Uh, there's live shows happening every weekend on Saturdays and Sundays, right. Fridays too. And so, like, if you're a fan of it and like a real diehard fan of it, now's the best time. Not particularly right now, because right, 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 right. Content, 
weird yeah. and crazy. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, like, just, you know, over the last year or so, it's the, it's the best time to ever be a wrestling fan because it's just, like, it's at the touch of your fingertip. You can get it for free all over the internet. Mm. Yeah. Um, having things like Instagram and Twitter make it possible for you to even interact with some of like my, my heroes were always pro wrestlers. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine being a kid having access to a smartphone like all kids do now. Like yeah. every kid has a touch screen yeah. phone. And being able to hop on Twitter and send him a message and maybe get a reply because I, I wake up to random messages from fans every single day. Mm-hmm. And w- like one day I just I I I, I don't get back to everyone but one like some days i'm just feeling down and just want to like try to cheer somebody out or just for any reason i'll just i'll have time yeah or make time or you know really make time to reply to people and some of the things people say back to you like oh my god i can't believe you read this this is the best day of my and i'm i mean like bro it really has an effect on people oh yeah and for, it's weird for me because you know like i'm i'm still where i started i, I still i'm yeah. chilling with my dad i'm mm-hmm. still in toledo ohio i'm yeah. kicking with the same guys that we went to high school with mm-hmm. i was just at brett clifford's house yesterday yeah. watching main with him and his dad and Dwayne smith you know what i'm saying like it, from my end it doesn't feel like a lot's changed at all the only thing that's different is the money mm-hmm. that's the only thing and like i get to re- wrestling's different though you right. know but i mean like i was it, I, it's not like I really afford a better lifestyle. I can just have more fun, though. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's the real difference for me. Being able to watch it from anywhere is just it's it's super cool. This is the best time ever. Well, you said like when growing up and stuff, there was only like you know WWE, and they were kind of like we talked a, b- a little bit about it as far as like movie stars. Like you can, it's the same kind of deal, but there's not like that allure of you know like the Ric Flair kind of guy where it's larger than life like hulk hogan type dudes anymore just because they're so accessible i think um exactly and it, th- th- i think that's why there, there's no mystique to it anymore mm-hmm. you, you never got the time of day to talk to rick flair you would see the video of him with a the couple girls. of women yep. dinged out and then that's all you saw and you, yeah. you thought that's all he ever did because of <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> People post pictures from home and doing all this extra stuff. We like we let people into our personal lives, and I think it's just because people just want to feel. I think like sometimes I just want to feel like a person. You know what I'm saying? It's not sure. like nothing. I like I don't feel like a person, but mm-hmm. I, it, it it feels good to get called Trey McBrayer every once and again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that. Yeah. It, it just the bring you back to where you should always try to bring yourself back to yeah staying humble and not always like having to wear well you don't wear a mask but always kind of wearing the mask or the cape or always having to be that person yeah can't feel it, man. yeah well as far as those crazy over-the-top dudes who was your guy growing up you talked about wwf and wcw who was the dude who was like man he's on i gotta watch that shit um, the Rock was like oh, yeah. my absolute favorite when I was like a kid, kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there were a couple of years where I actually quit watching wrestling because WCW got bought out by WWE, and I didn't like WCW, so they were featuring all these guys that I didn't want to watch. And The Rock had taken time away because he was getting more into acting, so I just was done watching wrestling for a little bit. But when I got back to when I got back into it, man, it was John Cena for the rest of my like, yes. life. Yeah. <laughs> he was just the sweetest thing I'd ever seen. And I could relate to him too. Yeah. Because it's this white dude trying to be a rapper yeah. and rapping which I mean, that just didn't fit in. And and all I knew is that in my life I didn't fit in. Right. And I was like I I I felt like I was always here with Cena. Yeah. So it's cool, man. I just, I was. I, stuck to, I, got, I got his spinner WWE belt like up on my mantle. Bro, that's it. <laughs> that belt is it. Um, I remember watching back because John Cena was always my guy too. Like when I started really getting into it, like when him and Edge, like hit some of those matches were so dope. But I remember watching back like we used to have like an anthology of all the WWE or uh, WrestleManias, and one year he's got like these really tight green shorts on and he's like you know just john whoever his name was for then and then the next year he's like you know john cena like properly like he's got the whole get up on he's coming out with his own music and things like that it's like bro a whole year your image was made and you're about to wrestle for this title like it's just yeah i feel it what's cool about like that particular story is wwe just did this feature on him um on their network called it's it's part of this uh, little short series they did about the ruthless aggression era yeah 
And that's when Cena debuted and Cena went in to talk about how um, when he first came in, he, you know, he was just, he was basically doing what he was doing before WWE. He used to wrestle under the name of the prototype. Mm -hmm. And then when he came in, they cut, he had long hair too. They cut his hair right before his match because Vince hated it. Yeah. And then they're like, we're calling you your real name. You're John Cena. Mm -hmm. But he went out there and all, he just had, he had a really good match with Kurt Angle, but wow. it never turned into anything else. They tried to feature him more like that, but he never developed any character. His gear was very bland and he didn't really stand out or anything like that. And he was, uh, he said he was coming home from the UK and he was on his last, like, little tour with wwe because they were about to let him go mm -hmm. and while they were i think he said they were on a uh, bus or a plane and uh like ray mysterio and a few of the guys were freestyling in the back and cena hopped back there and decided to rap with him and stephanie mcmahon heard him in the back from the front <laughs> so when he got off the bus she like pulled him inside and she was like how do you know how to do that and he goes not nah, to do what and she goes you memorize all those words he goes no, I made that up as I went. Like, it wasn't a thing. She goes, you made that up? And, like, right then and there, he goes, yeah. And she goes, how do you do it? He goes, I, I just know how to do it. And she asked him, she was like, how would you like to do that on TV? And he was just like, sure. So she, like, that was, she she saved him, bro. Like, that was her personal thing, bro. That's so crazy. And it's just. Yeah. That is super crazy because he was, like, that close to getting cut. And now he's, like. Well, what, Dude, the biggest thing that's ever happened to WWE. For real. I mean, well, you saw, you said you watched Wrestle, uh, WrestleMania last night. How'd you feel about that thing he did with, um, oh man, what's the dude's name? Bray Wyatt. There it is, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was really entertaining. I, I know that it's not going to be for everybody because it's just, did you get to see it yourself? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was I. It's pretty dramatic, you know? It was, it was kind of dope. It was like watching like a short film, kind of. Exactly, and that's what that's what I knew it was going to have to be. So I, I really appreciated it. I thought it was good, and I, I kind of knew that with a character like Bray Wyatt's, you know what I'm saying? Like they kind of have the room to do stuff like that. Like yeah. it, it just wouldn't work for everybody. But I mean, like they told that story in a really cool way. I thought it was sweet, and it also was. I thought it was really funny too. Like when Cena made his entrance. Yeah. And, like, he's, like, looking for a crowd. Like, no one sold it all night. No, <laughs> no one, except no for one him. Back if there was not a crowd. But yeah. here comes Cena, like, the the one dude that always does right. And he's looking around. He's like... Yep. And then he just looks at the camera like, oh, yeah, at least you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was good. I didn't think about that, too. You know, that was The Rock's big thing when he came into the ring for so long. It was like, finally, The Rock has returned to you know, wherever he was, and the crowd would go crazy. Like, yeah, he couldn't have done that last night. That would have been so weird to see. Mm -hmm. And, like, that that's why wrestling's so weird without the crowd. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not a real big sports fan at all, so I can't personally say it's not the same as watching basketball because I'm sure that, like, but, I, like, for a live game that's happening, for, a, like, that matters, if a three-pointer happens, like, and you're watching, I can only assume you're still going to, you know what I'm saying, if it's a game yeah. that matters, you're still going to, like, react to it. Right. But wrestling is really based on, it's built around pleasing the crowd and not so much yeah. genuinely trying to win the contest. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I believe that everyone knows that now. Yeah. yeah. I don't believe that we live in a time where, besides children, you know, like, that just haven't gotten smart to the internet yet. Um, because it ruins everything. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah. so I, I, I think of a match like WrestleMania 18 when The Rock and Hogan wrestled for the very first time. Two of the biggest names in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before that match even started, I mean, they stood across the ring from each other for a solid just like, stare three down. minutes. Yeah, because it's so like, loud. the crowd that was the biggest reaction of the night. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you try to recreate that without the fans. It just looks like a couple of guys, without people. And yeah. it just it doesn't click. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it, yeah, yeah, it, it definitely sucks. Like I was watching last night, and I remember a lot of the ones I really like are like the uh, the ones that are outside. Like he like is like yeah, the night yeah. kind of gets like they you know because it gets darker and the lights start coming up like that's how you know like the big guys are starting to come up and things like that. Yeah, um, it's the show. Yeah, like that's the, how it was for me yeah. as a kid. Like it felt like the when the sun was up, it was the prelims, and then yeah. 
the like you know you get the real crazy extravagant entrances where Triple H comes out with like a skull the mask. Pyro entrances start happening. Yeah, yeah. The Undertaker and all that comes out. Yeah. And that, so like and that's the thing. All right, so WrestleMania like is normally a seven hour event now, mm. and it was shorter than normal because Undertaker's entrance accounts for half of the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's as long as the match. <laughs> that, yeah. That ramp is always so long, bro, and it yeah. always takes him like a solid five minutes to walk from the top of that entrance way down to the ring. It's so funny. And it it's funny every time. <laughs> so uh you brought up the Undertaker and I was gonna ask you, um I was gonna wait, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So what's your top who's your top entrance? Like you can go um do yours for all time and then do yours for now. Like, uh, for all, the, the all time best entrance I think that anyone's ever had is Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> and, um, it's not even, it's, it's based off, I mean, like, the dude is just Japanese Jesus. There is, so he, he has such a strong entrance theme i mean like it's really really sweet and i think it was for a for an event nxt brooklyn nxt takeover brooklyn and i can't remember who he was facing but specifically i think i am very very positive it was that city but uh so his entrance it, it, it's just like in a I, I don't know what and what um uh, instruments there are but there is, oh it's a violin so um you hear the violin go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and the crowd sings it like that, like, yeah. like it's a football chant or something like that. So, I mean, he had a, he had a live uh, violinist play him out, and he did an, a super extended entrance anyway. And I mean, like, the crowd was just singing their hearts out, dude. It was like watching... <laughs> Like people sing Freebird, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like straight up. And uh, the second, at the end of his entrance, the lights go out and they hit a spotlight on him when he does like this. It like they they'll do this violin stroke where it goes, and then yeah. it goes right back into it. When that happens, he does this big dramatic thing against the ropes, and that the crowd always eats it up, and he just lays on the ground like, like he's just like. Super sexy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so he gets back up and the lights cut on and his music cut off, but the crowd sang his song for like the next minute. That's and hilarious. that was just the coolest thing I've, I was like, dude, I'm getting goosebumps <laughs> thinking about it, bro. Yeah. Like, you can't find it online because WWE just doesn't have, won't let, like, you can find that entrance, but it cuts off before the fans sing it back to him. Yeah. Dude, oh my god, it was just one of the most epic things ever. It's it was like watching a concert. It was so sweet. I bet that sounds super dope. That sounds really cool. And then, but I mean, like for cinematic purposes and stuff like that, that was just kind of just real. That was a moment that the fans created. If the fans didn't do that, it, it wouldn't have been so so memorable. But I mean, like as far as like putting work into an entrance and stuff like that, I think. Uh, John Cena at uh, was the one where he, was it the one where he came out like a mob boss? No, actually, I think that one was pretty sweet. There was one. It was at Judgment Day 2005. Cena came out on the back of a semi that his cousin was scratching his entrance music on. Oh, that's lit! And then Cena starts kicking these things, and then the big exhausts on the uh, <laughs> on the semi start blowing smoke. That was sweet. But it was this, it was Night of Champions. That's what it was, and. Uh, this this damn like UFO looking thing starts lowering from the from the ceiling and it's got lights at the bottom of it that are just like strobing out and no one knows what's going on and then Cena's music kicks on and then they had like a floating entrance way for Cena. It was just in the middle of the air. It was his own ramp that just like was hovering there. It was being suspended by cables. And then Cena starts kicking these like confetti things out and stuff like that. Dude, it was just so sweet. That shit sounds but, dope. Bro, I gotta check that shit out. Yeah, I do too. But, like, uh, someone who I think, like, every like he has the same entrance every week is Aleister Black. He's got the dopest entrance in the game right now, bro. He's yeah. just so slick with it. He just raises up from the dead. And I think, like, it's so... 
it's so it's not the undertaker but it, yeah. you know what i'm saying i feel like it, it can be compared to it but it, it's not it at all it's so sweet like he's got a different entrance jacket every time he's got these sweet ass candles and his entrance music is just dope as hell alistair black's entrance is sweet that's awesome um, i wish that they would let me like come out smoking actual weed sometimes so <laughs> i could i could boost myself in this right now because i'd be like dude the rascals bro they got the dopest entrance they come out blowing real weed <laughs> i'll smoke half a spliff and hand it to someone in the crowd never pulled that off I've, I've smoked during a match before a fan uh had a cartridge pen one time and we were doing this crazy dive circuit there was 12 people in the match and they knew that everyone was going to dive so i did my dive i i did it pretty early and then someone this, this dude named roach i knew his name in the crowd he, he goes hey bro, you could use this and i was like hell yeah and i, took it and I stood up and i showed everyone in the crowd i said hey if you're looking for me I'll be right here. <laughs> and, That's and then, well, what's funny is, is I had to get back. I was, once the dives were over, I was a part of the first spot, and I immediately forgot what I was supposed to do. Because <laughs> it's all planned. So I'm just like, I get in there, and I see the dude he slides in. His name was Cole Radrick, and we make eye contact. And I didn't want to ruin it and ask him, like, what do we do? And <laughs> he charges me and throws the clothesline, and I just ducked it instinctually and... Like I don't remember what the spot was, but I did it. Like my like muscle memory took over for me, and it went perfectly. But my brain was just absolutely not there. I, I could not. I, I didn't know what was supposed to happen, but it happened. And I remember thinking like that was the luckiest thing in the world that's ever happened to me. <laughs> so how often do you guys like practice it? Like uh, when do you practice it? Um, you a lot. So. It, it really depends. Um, when I do impact tapings, I normally get a like a lot of time before the show to hang around and try to uh, call stuff. But uh, a lot of there's there's some instances where you don't practice at all. You guys just talk about what you're gonna do, mm. and then you go out there and do it. And then maybe if you're gonna try something that requires a little bit of choreography and you need them to uh, do something that's a little too specific to just explain verbally. So you got to show them and then you just get in there and do that. And then there's, there's sometimes where we're just dicking around and just like want to wrestle and <laughs> we just actually wrestle each other and do moves on one another that's for no reason. That's cool. So with that, what's your, what would you say for you personally is like your favorite match you've ever done? Oh, uh, my favorite match I've ever done was uh, the six-man tag match that I did back in December, and it was against my like one of one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, and it was the first time I'd got to meet him. And then it was, it was Des Zach myself versus Will Osprey, Amazing Red, and Rocky Romero. That's and Amazing Red was a dude that I was watching since I was fifteen, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, like I want to be just like him when I get bigger <laughs> and really. <laughs> And then Will Ospreay is literally the best wrestler in the world right now, like yeah. bar none. And getting his praise and, you know, getting to work with him and having a good match the way we did, like that was just, that was the best wrestling experience I've ever had. Well, kind of going off of that, I mean, that's going to be hard to top that. But yeah. if you could say you're the GM, right, and you have, you get to pick from every wrestler you can and obviously yourself. You're gonna put yourself in like the match, like your dream match. What what is it? With who? Mm, dream match. It can be like a tag match, like you just it, said. It would. Or... It would probably be. Well, I I, I really want to wrestle Amazing Red one on one. Mm -hmm. I never. I didn't get to do that, so I would book that. I want to go one on one. That'd be so sweet. <laughs> Well, do you I think... tried to campaign for it on Twitter this year, but it didn't happen. <laughs> I tried. Do you think that well, sweet like... was though? I like I, I had talked about it. I tweeted like at Impact Wrestling because he used to wrestle for Impact. So I tweeted, uh, I was like, "Yo, Impact Wrestling! Like, Amazing Red's taking bookings again, and he's gonna be here when we like just this weekend that we're coming out of. I was yep. supposed to be in Tampa for WrestleCon weekend mm -hmm. because WrestleMania weekend is the biggest weekend for wrestling." 
every year. Yeah, yeah, every yeah. independent promotion goes to uh, whatever city WrestleMania is, and then there's a whole weekend long convention of independent shows, and that's where we make the most money. You wrestle in front of the biggest crowds because everyone's in town from all over the world. And same with wrestlers, like you got wrestlers from Japan and the UK and Ireland and Canada and Mexico, like and every everyone is. If you're a part of wrestling, even a little like. If you're a wrestler, you're there no matter where you're from. If you can afford to go and you're in demand and so on, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have some kind of demand, you you will be there. So um, Amazing Red was going to be at uh, WrestleCon. And it's a real good place for people that don't have that notoriety or, exp- or like exposure yet too to like get thrown in a random match and get seen because I my first time at WrestleCon I had one match and it was a scramble match of like 12 guys mm-hmm. and out of those 12 guys uh this promoter from Mexico named Crazy Boy pulled me aside from all people and was like oh I want to bring you to Mexico to uh, go on tour with us That's and wild. that was how I first toured Mexico so like Anything can happen at WrestleCon. I like I always tell everyone that's a wrestler, like, bro, like you, you have to figure out a way to make it work. I went down there with no money, no hotel. The first night I got down there, I almost ended up sleeping on Ricochet's floor, but he said that he didn't have enough room in his apartment. <laughs> yeah. And uh like uh I ended up just crashing. There was one night I slept like in the banquet hall. There was like this side room little hallway. I slept in there and then another night I ended up getting in a hotel and stuff on the floor at the hotel. But, uh, yeah, bro, I just I stuck it out and something happened from it. But uh, with talking about WrestleCon, I was supposed to be down there and I tweeted out, like, at Impact, I want Amazing Red one-on-one. And he, like, hit me up on Twitter and was like, hey, bro, uh, if Impact's down to do it, I'm down. And I was just like... <laughs> yes, <let's> figure it <laughs> out. <laughs> like, that was just so random, bro. I saw I had a message from Amazing Red and, like, what's this about? And I click and I was just like, <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. That's, so... <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's a really cool. Um, so you kind of talked about like just th- putting yourself out there as far as wrestler con and hoping you get seen. Um, but for like, say someone like around here or anywhere really is just trying to kind of put their foot into the door and like maybe learn or practice. Um, now that you've kind of been in the business for a while, um, how would you recommend that they did something like that? Um, I always, like, I try to tell people showing face is one of the most important things because you you never know what can happen. Wrestling shows, like, if you're not signed, you're starting off on the independents. Mm-hmm. And the independents, are, they're crazy. Every Like, anything and everything happens. You always got to expect the unexpected. People are always traveling in cars and uh shit happens you know so let's say like I, I got one student and it's hard as hell to get him in cars that he's not booked for because he's just you know what i'm saying he's got a lot going on in his personal life and he, he can't it's not that he can't but he doesn't he doesn't necessarily take every opportunity that he can mm-hmm. and opposed to the other student who is in every single car that I'm like, hey, I'm going to this show. Do you want to go? And he's like, absolutely, I'll drive. You know what I'm saying? He's going to get on shows faster and he's going to progress because he's there showing face. And so, like, I know it's hard to take so much time, especially, like, when you think about it, I, the longest car ride I've ever done was, I think, 13 hours. And, uh, uh, I think it's like 14 hours or 15 hours. but uh, And it was for a show I wasn't booked for. But you know what I'm saying? I kept doing it and mm-hmm. doing it until I ended up getting booked on the show. And then that led to a... That was a big booking. And then that led to another big booking. And it's like... So that, that just shows dedication. And like you could be the most talented dude in the room. But if you, you're not... Like you, you're not respectable or you're, you're not you don't show that you have the heart for right. it and you're just you're here to get you know get as far as you can based off of which just what you can do like that, that's not valuable to anybody yeah so yeah i said something like that recently to a buddy um of mine who is trying to get into like twitch and things like that and so like, i feel like i got a good product this and that blah 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 i'm like you gotta like promote yourself man like if, if you you could have the best thing but if nobody knows it then no one's gonna care yeah it it's, uh, it's like everything about investing in yourself you know? yeah exactly yeah. 
So one thing I got to ask you about before we kind of switch gears into the horror movies, actually two things. Um, I was going through your highlights a little bit, and I seen the one where you lost the 24-7 title match. <laughs> no, the Joey Ryan in a dick measuring contest? Yes, bro. That's, that is so good. <laughs> so fire, man. That's, that was a treat. You can just talk about that a little bit. Uh, so we were at IWA Mid-South, and um, there used to be a promotion in Texas called Wrestle Circus. It was a really fun promotion to work for, but they're not around anymore. And uh, they had this title called the Sideshow Championship. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was based off, you, 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 it could be defended in any kind of challenge. You just, but if someone challenged you, you just had to do it. And one day, uh, out of nowhere, Joey Ryan came up to me of all people and was like, hey, man, uh, I was talking to Russell Circus and um, he was like, I want to get you involved with this. No, 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 that's, that's not what happened. <laughs> well, well, Des, Des is the one that that had the car. It wasn't Joey. Okay. Des was like, "Hey, I w I'm trying to get you in with Russell Circus, and Joey wants to film this this bit with someone." He goes, "I put your name in the hat." He said, "That's fine," uh, because Joey was on this show that was on a Wednesday at Rockstar, and then Thursday we were going to be at IWA uh, at the same show also. So he was like, "What we can do is we'll film you winning the belt today because at Des Des won the belt." from Joey mm -hmm. and he needed a way to for it to change hands just so that we had some YouTube content to yeah. spread it out before we got it back. I don't know how Des won it, but Des defended to or decided to defend it against me in a pretzel salt counting contest. <laughs> so we had to guess the number of uh, salt grains on a pretzel and I guessed four hundred and twenty. Yeah. Did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I won. So then the next day, Joey comes up and goes, hey, um, we got to figure out a way for me to win the belt off you to record it today. So uh, he's like, I, I can't really come up with anything. So if you got any ideas, let me know. And I, he, he had been doing this thing where he had been making his dick pretty famous in wrestling. Like his, his, his finishing move, or no, it wasn't his finishing move, but it's one of his like, big, biggest signature move is you grab him by the penis and instead of, it hurt him. He hawks up and flips you with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, he he it hit, he did it in Japan, and it went viral. It went so viral, and he just started making so much money off that dude. And he was the most booked dude ever, and probably still is. He's he's amazing. But uh, that uh, fucking. I decided I just came. I was like, "Let's have a dick measuring contest." And he was like, "Okay, well, what do you like? What do you think? Like, how do we do this?" And uh, I was just like, I, "I couldn't really think of anything." But I think uh, this dude Sammy Callahan was like kind of lingering by, and he was just like, "Yo, I want to be a part of it." And he would, he just inserted himself in it, and he kind of came up with this with the idea. Yeah. And then from there, we just kind of improved it. And, like, we, we really didn't know where, like, how this was going to end. <laughs> and we was like, let's just film it once. And then we filmed it, and we are like, are we happy with that? We're like, yeah, we're good with that. And over ice week, we're done. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. It's so funny, man. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. Because, yeah, I was weak. Like, when I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell is this, bro? So I'm checking it out. And, like, that the reaction for the ref at the end, when he just kind of, like, looks at the camera and shrugs his shoulders, bro, that shit is so on point. What? Like, my my favorite part is the, the thumbnail for it. The thumbnail is the creepiest because the ref has this this look on his face that he looks so oddly satisfied <laughs> looking at Joey, just like excellent work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it couldn't have been more perfect, dude. Oh my god, he just looks so weird looking at him like, yes, yeah, so I get to get paid for this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a question. I watched the uh, one of your highlights too. Was when you fought that uh, when you wrestled that moose guy. I was gonna say like that dude looks huge. Like ha some of those hits and stuff had to hurt. Dude, moose was a uh, NFL player for seven years. He looks like oh, it. if yeah, like yeah. if that puts into perspective of how actually big like in person he is. Like you, you from the video, you can tell I'm really not a big dude at all. And if I ever look like it, it's those cameras play tricks, bro. Those cameras are <laughs> real tricky, bro. But uh dude moose is impossibly big <laughs> like, it, like really he's just uh and yeah some of that shit hurt straight up man 
getting slammed against him uh, stairs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I asked. That, that looked painful. And then the power bomb on the apron hurt, too. I remember yeah. those two really vividly hurting. <laughs> well, what was, uh, what do you think was your, like, biggest, like, like, the biggest hit you've probably taken? Where you, like, really got a hit and you're like, shit, man, I gotta definitely actually, like, take a second. Uh, there was one time, dude, I actually, like, I, uh, re- it was, like, the worst sprain I've ever had, dude. Like, it, it hurt so bad that I was, like, I wish my foot broke mm-hmm. so that what it it would just heal better. Right. Um, what had happened was, is it was the, right off the rip of the match, it was a tag match. It was the first, first match of this show that was like a sellout crowd of like 600 people in a super tight venue in Dayton, Ohio, mm-hmm. where I was living at the time. So when I come out first, you know what I'm saying? There's, they're like, they were hot for it. My girlfriend's family came down from Canada to, uh, to see me wrestle live for the first time. And uh, because she was doing backstage stuff for that show, it was a big show. And fucking the first thing that happens is we do two, two, two double cutters or RKOs. Yeah. And the guys, they, they, uh, they roll out of the ring and they gather on the same side. And my partner and I, Myron Reed, we take off the ropes and front flip over it. And we're going to take them out. But the dude that was supposed to catch me was standing in like way too in than he was supposed to. And, uh, like, I, we didn't even touch, bro. And I front flipped, and I landed on the guardrail that keeps the Ooh. fans. But I, I landed standing straight up. Like, I landed on my feet, but, my like, my feet landed on the bar. Like, yeah. my legs went perfectly right in between the, the vertical bars. And my I landed on the horizontal bar, and my foot just cracked right over it, dude. And oh, it fuck. immediately swelled up. I, I like, uh, I took my kick pad off. And then I asked someone if they had any tape, and someone gave me electrical tape, and I tried to tape my foot up, Mm -hmm. like, through my view, and the tape kept snapping, so I just tossed it real mad and just, uh, you see me, like, yank my laces as tight as I can, and I just fix my my boot to make it, like, so it can't blow up anymore. Right, right. And I, I carried out, like, the next 15 minutes and did the whole match, dude, and it was just the worst thing in the world. I couldn't walk for a whole month, and I was three weeks away from my first uh, tour of the UK and I had damn I had ten matches I had to do while I was there. Fuck. And you have muscle through the all very, of it with that? The very last day I had three matches in one day. We had two different shows to go to and one of the shows I had two matches. And I was just by the end of it, my uh, my left foot I had to keep my right foot wrapped the entire time, but from overcompensating so much and yeah constantly putting so my left foot was like starting to swell up just as bad as my right one, but it just didn't have the bruising. Right, especially yeah. with your style. I mean, that's your again a yeah. foot beat up like that. Like that would definitely fuck. He's like bad. Dope, Dude, man. that was the fucking worst. I can imagine. Like, you painted the picture. Like my foot hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that sounds awful. Like I, I remember like landing, hitting, looking up, seeing like the dude in the front crowd like looking at like oh fuck and just like letting go and dropping back like I'm dead <laughs> he just he saw the tears like just start forming right before I... <laughs> well beat up limbs and all that man kind of segues us right into our little horror movies I think <laughs> yeah I'm ready for it so uh Let's uh let's get into that a little bit. You know, I hit you up and I was like, "Yo, we do top fives. It's kind of our thing." And I was like, "What's your thing? We can do a top five. And you're like, "Horror." We haven't done horror yet, so it works out perfect. Um, I'm not a big horror guy. I'm not like opposed to it, but I don't know. I'm just uh, I feel like when it comes to horror, which which your stick with it? Like, what what do you prefer if you watch a horror movie? It's I like. like, like and then there's like paranormal movies and you know what I'm saying? There's there's so many different ways. I for me personally, I'm looking at my list and it's like the psychological shit. Yeah. Where okay. it like kind of like makes you like as a viewer like trip out a little bit. Like it's not like just the monster, but like the good like like the setup, like the ambience of it, you know, like the music, the the tone, like it Dude, if we're gonna talk about music, can we just appreciate Jordan Peele? Yes, <laughs> dude, he, he has the sweetest uh, 
the way he incorporates like popular hip hop and R and B songs that I mean like Rippy's like that um that I got five on it. For us set down for um us was so sweet. And then my favorite is uh that Candyman trailer. Yeah, yeah that Candyman trailer with it. He uh he mixed down that say my name and that was just the coolest thing I've yeah. ever mm-hmm. heard. It really was. That was I was really looking forward to that one too. Um or I am. I don't know when it's coming out, but I, it one. comes out in June, but I'm I'm afraid that it might get pushed back with this yeah. whole thing that's going on, the pandemic. Um yeah. so I don't know. I just I haven't really ever it's never really been my thing. Maybe I'm just super soft. Um like I told I was telling you guys at the beginning, I hadn't seen Us. I hadn't seen um, uh, The Thing yet. Um, just a lot of... I, I feel like I'm neglecting myself. But I got some <laughs> I got some good ones on my list. So, yeah. Uh, talking about Jordan Peele, I guess I'll start it off since I'm obviously not the expert. You guys can go after. <laughs> Number five for me is Get Out. Get Out, they just... I feel like they do a super good job of, like, setting up the whole... Um, like the psychological thing, man, where he you're kind of feeling what the main character's feeling the whole time, like everybody's against him kind of thing. And they slowly just give you little by little. And you know, for a coming out party, you, you know, I don't know that Jordan Peele could do much better. Like he knocked it out of the park with this one. Um Yeah. And as far as like as far as like proper horror, I don't know if it's you know, there's no monster or anything like that. It's just people being crazy and doing what they do like yeah it's just it was really different and really cool and he murdered it like the hypnosis thing like really messing with your brain and things like that and then him still kind of sprinkling comedy in there throughout like he just murdered it like I, I'm about it so get out from his number five that he's got a way of making people look crazier than they ever have when they cry Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, bro. When like the maid is, like starts crying while she's smiling, like every dude, in, it was in a what was it? Uh, Us also. I feel like every like he the way he gets people to just like get so much water in their eye, but like keep such a an open eye and yeah. look at yeah. their butt out. Like he's done it in both his films, and I'm just like, how do you keep getting people to do this? This is, <laughs> this is the creepiest thing visually I, I watch. Yeah, I think going from what he was known for in comedy to doing that was just, it's like you don't expect it. And it's a big it's, turn because Ian Peel was one of my favorite things to watch on Comedy Central. And for him to be so good at it, like immediately so yeah. good at it. Like there's no like, oh yeah, he showed some promise. Like the first movie he came out with was just, you know, Get Out was just fire. Like he yeah. just hit all the notes. It was real crazy. The acting was on point. The story was, like, well-paced and everything, and it was, like I said, it still had, like, his, like, flavor of comedy in there still with a <laughs> TSA, motherfucker. Like, that shit is just <laughs> so good. Dude, the, oh, my God. Yeah, it's little things like that that make, like, the comedic relief mm-hmm. in horror movies yeah. just so, like, appreciation-worthy, because that was fucking hilarious. Yes. And then in, like, a... Yeah. The newest Chucky movie, I think the one that really got me was when he was like, this is for Tupac, and then <laughs> stab dude. <laughs> so what, what do you got in number? one of the, the Conjuring. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, so like that was a movie that I didn't expect to, I, I, so out of my top five, I think The Conjuring is the scariest of them, mm-hmm. but it's, it is is just it's not my favorite horror movie, but like if I genuinely want to get scared watching one, like that's what I'll go to because that there is this like the aesthetic to her makeup. I'm a big fan of not doing CG. I hate CG and I don't. Yeah. It's hard. It makes it hard to suspend my belief. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many things that we take exceptions for, like when it comes to Avenger movies and all the you know superhero and yeah. Freaking Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious movies. Like the amount that we're expected to suspend our belief to enjoy these movies is pretty demanding. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying. And it requires a lot of computer graphics. So when I can, when I see something that's like real prosthetics and is still visually pleasing, I can appreciate it. Like 
it, it makes what I'm watching so much more enjoyable because I don't feel like it's as demanding for me to suspend my belief because I'm actually I'm, what I'm seeing is actually there. It's real. Not, yeah. It's not see. You know what I'm saying? I know. And I think that like movie making and stuff like that is super cool to do. So in the conjuring is what to expect, but it didn't use any CGI that the freaking mom dude the way that they uh, made her look like in through the process of that movie was crazy they had this specific scene where she was uh they were playing that clapping game which i thought was i thought that was real real creepy and uh, they clap towards each other to try it's like hide and seek but yeah, yeah. you lead them to where you are and they got, got the, with the same number up and there's the mom like on top of the wardrobe like full demon face and everything yeah. and it was just like holy shit dude yeah. out of nowhere. all the nope <laughs> it was striking man yeah that's a good point with the uh like the the practical effects like yeah. you watch like uh i'm trying to think like off the top of my head right, so transformers you watch like transformers like now and it looks old where if you yeah. watch like the first jurassic park where it's all practical effects and robots. Yeah. It's like, damn, those still look super good, bro. And that's like a 40-year-old movie. Like, mm. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for that. Is it 40 years old? Is it, it might be that old, right? No. no? It's younger than me, so no. Oh, well, all right. 30, 25, I don't know. <laughs> You're like 38. How would you uh, answer number five, Brian? So, my number five, I have A Quiet Place. Um, yeah, I, man, that one is... God, it's so, it's not really scary, but it's just, man, it, it has you on the edge of your seat the whole time. It's tense. Yeah, it's so um, tense. And it just, man, it, like you care. I haven't seen it since the first time I watched it because I was so tense in the movie the whole time. And then the, the like last, the last few scenes where she's going into labor and then all that happens, man, it's just, it's terrifying, like. Of a thought to happen. I like that movie a lot. I had some serious gripes with it, though. Sure. Like, from a logic standpoint, honestly. All right, so if you're a family and you're walking, so the moment that the youngest child dies because he's playing with the, the, the fucking... The, the rocket. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he grabbed the batteries, which he knew was a dumbass idea. Like, all these kids... All right, if that kid's well off enough that young to know fucking sign language that he's a pretty intellectual kid right he's smart he's smart enough to really understand the severity of the situation that noise will get you fucking killed yeah he decided oh I'm, i need these batteries and the daughter that enabled him to grab that damn spaceship like that was stupid okay but that's forgettable because kids are kids so i can i definitely can see that happening you know what i'm saying yeah it said that yeah. 40 days into the life they were living, you haven't, you, you're not even allowed to talk. So I could imagine how bored you fucking get. You're like, I have to get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? Like, I'm grabbing that spaceship. I get that. Cool. Whatever. But so they're walking, and when they're on the bridge, the father is carrying the middle child, which was stupid. Wow. <laughs> Why aren't you carrying the youngest? <laughs> while, yeah. while the wife walked behind him, the daughter walked behind her, and then the very youngest walked in the very back. Right. You leave the runt of the group to follow everyone? <laughs> what in the entire fuck is wrong with you? You are a, you are a fucking parent. While the, while the aliens are out in everywhere. And you know how fast they are. You're a piece of shit human being. <laughs> so the kid deserved to die. <laughs> because he was the spawn of a fucking idiot. And uh, it was unfortunate because he didn't choose that life. Um, and his parents fucked and he just had all these stupid problems nine months later. Yeah, man. So, like, um, that's kind of what I was thinking too, like watching it. It's my number four. So we can just keep going on it a little bit. Um but yeah, my thing is okay. like, why are you still like, uh, like, why are you still having kids, man? Like, I get you yeah. need to reproduce and shit Single. like that, but like, what, the, what is the whittle it down? Fucking thing a child does when they come into yeah. the, and yeah. they come into this world, exactly. they cry. I literally thought that too. Like, that was my one thing. 
with the movie was like, why are you having a child that can't make noise? Like, like this is this is stupid. This is the dumbest thing ever. Like she was already pregnant again when that little homie died. So that was number four on the way, right? Yeah. One, two, yeah, yeah, four. So like yeah. that's so many kids to watch after in this like weird alien apocalypse monster type thing they got going on, and especially for the circumstances, based off of the fact that sound is what is the you know, only yeah. way that they you know what I'm saying they can detect you and they're hypersensitive why the the tension <laughs> the tension like you said though is so on point cuz I saw it in theaters and even being in theaters like obviously people like you know they'll cough or whatever this and that but like you're sitting there as like a viewer and, and there's like don't fucking make any noise like you're just watching them and it's just like extra quiet and everybody's like locked in and you're like dude we can't fucking move or else we're going to fucking die yeah. like they did such a good job yeah. of just kind of building that, and yeah, I don't know. It's super good, uh, other than like the few gripes we had. But I mean, that's gonna happen, obviously, when there's no dialogue to really pick apart. So <laughs> there's gotta be something. And what's crazy? What was what was big for me that uh, is always big for me is if a movie can like can keep me, and I have to read the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I'm, I don't want to read while I watch a movie. Like I really just don't. Yeah. But it it didn't require a lot of reading at all, and it didn't require a lot of dialogue, and it still kept you. So that's why. Like that was a, they had like a seventeen million dollar budget for that movie, and I think they, I might be wrong. I think they were like in the two hundred or three hundred millions on what they made back. Oh yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah, they knocked. And it that was that uh, the dude that starred in it. That he he directed. I can't remember his yeah. name. He directed. Not it. That was his first film, also. Yeah, super so, good. Yeah. So yeah, that's my four. Uh, Trey, what do you got over there for? For part four, I have signs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. That it does a really good job of that too. The tense. Like the tenseness of the whole movie, you don't know when they're where the aliens are. Nothing. It's just kind of, yeah. They're like fucking with them the whole time. Mm-hmm. They're running around, hitting like the wind chimes, running on the roof. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's good, man. Mm-hmm. And being young when that movie came out, uh, it was striking. When like uh, I remember two specific scenes where uh, Mel and uh, his brother were running around. No, 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 that's that's not what it was. His uh, this happened right before then. Um, Mel's brother woke up in the middle of the night and looked out of his window and saw the alien standing on his brother's rooftop. Yeah, and it was just the dark figure, and it was just so quick and like yeah. oh, just the last thing you expect to see. And dude. Oh my god, when I was a kid, that scene used to get me every single time. And then uh, there was the other one, the kids in Mexico at the yeah. party. Yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. Like, running from window to window, and then you see them walk across mm-hmm. the little thing, and then they freeze-framed it and do it. I was just like, I, I truly believe in aliens, and that, that shit scared me. It doesn't, it didn't fascinate me when I was a kid. It, like, it petrified me that there were right. aliens. And it makes you, like, so, go, like, it makes you, like because think. That movie made me think that there were violent. It makes yeah. you think too, like as a kid, even like every time you're like laying in bed and you hear like a bump or something, like and like, you know, like whether it's like the neighbor's house or something hitting your roof or some crazy shit, you're like okay, that's an alien, bro, for sure. Like there's no no <laughs> doubt about it. There's definitely something on my roof, and this is it. <laughs> that scene though, that scene where it walks in is, is I haven't seen yeah I haven't seen signs since like I saw it on VHS. We rented it back in the day, and. But I still remember vividly at that party when it walks by. That's like the first time you really see it. You're like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it it gets you. Yeah. So yeah, I like that one. Number four, where you at, Brian? Um, so my number four, um, I have it. it uh, the new like one or the, the old first, one? Okay. I'm going to take the first new one. Um, like, so the first part of the newest one. I, I'm a sucker for Stephen King stuff anyway. And... I thought the very beginning of it where they actually show it like bite Giorgio's arm off it, it like it had you at that point like yo this is this is gonna be a lot scarier than the made for TV movie back in the day um and you know I'm not huge on the CGI stuff either but I think they did a really good job in this one like 
I guess because of how they can show it is that's his like that's its tactic is making the the stuff around you like you believe you're actually terrified and it's not actually it's happening. True. So I don't know. That one was just and I think the guy who played as Skarsgård like. The way he did it with his eyes, and he he drooled a little bit too. Like it was so yeah, creepy. Yeah, he could he could like manipulate his bottom lip to do yeah. that weird little. I don't know what to call. It. He had like he could point his bottom lip. Yeah, that dude yeah, was um, extra creepy already. And then he threw all that makeup and stuff on him, man. It makes it even yeah, worse. It was, it, I think it's real interesting because it's got such a like in depth story. Yeah, that it definitely needed two chapters to tell. So with part one, you kind of, I think part one and part two are might be hard for someone that's not a horror fan or someone that's not a, a true fan or knows what the backstory is before watching it. It's hard mm-hmm. to accept because like my dad really, really liked the first one and really, really did not like the second one. And I, um, I can understand why, but since I know the story and I was just expecting to see what I saw, I was like, Hell yeah, this is sweet and much better than what everyone calls yep. the like iconic Tim Curry. Ver- Dude, I, I'm I'm no fan of the. I like I watched him as a kid. I actually was a fan of it, but I if if you want to call it a horror thing, the way they used practical effects yeah. and stuff like that was just it was so. You know, like it, it, yeah. it, it's hard to watch now. Back then, it, I, I can't imagine watching it back then and still seeing it. Like, damn, this looks great. It really right. wasn't that awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I liked the first one a whole lot, and specifically that scene that you were talking about—the way that he was talk, the way that Pennywise like uh, talked to Georgie from the sewer. It had such a like. You shouldn't appreciate how creepy and like pedophile-esque it was like it was fucked up Mm -hmm. and like that was it was just like this is real weird and kind of hard to watch but the rest of the film he wasn't like that and i was expecting to see him like that for the rest of the film but i also i didn't know what to expect but that's what i kind of wanted though that i was like if they keep this i was like i think this film would be really scary which i mean it still was i thought it was really good Um, yeah and and it did did everything that it was supposed to hit all the points that it should have. Granted, in the book, though, at the end of the movie, everyone's supposed to have a gangbang with Beverly yep. to, uh, to to have their fucking truce. Yep. Which they, they didn't put that in there. They did this weird little HIV transfer of split in their hands. And... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think, to the part that makes it you know scarier, I think for the movies on my list, it might be the scariest movie. Um, is the the part where they're all kids, and the, that's where the first part thrives. Is the part one is really more horror than part two because it's you know if you know you like you put yourself in that situation as a little kid and trying to fight this alien demon clown thing, and it's very terrifying. So I thought they did a good job with that. So the HIV transmission thing kind of takes us right into my number three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, how the, how the fuck do those do that? How um, the same <laughs> My number three is It Follows. This one's basically about uh, if you have sex with somebody, I did, you... I didn't understand. I, I It Follows was weird for me. It, I loved it because it's such a ridiculous idea, but then like the horror aspects as far as like the forever tension of something chasing you um, is just there. So like the premise is... Basically, if you have sex with somebody, you can track this, like, ghost, like, demon thing that just chases you down and tries to kill you. And then, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, but, like, the way that they shoot it, where it's like, there's just a crowd of people and you just see this thing beelining for you. Like, it doesn't run, but it's kind of like a Michael Myers type, like, brisk walk. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, it's coming at you with a purpose, and it is just super good, and they have a few scenes in it where, if you don't have the, di- like, the disease, I guess, if you want to call it that, you can't see it. So they'll have, like, it attacking people that are trying to stop it from getting to where it's going, and it's just so good. Um, there's a few scenes in it that are really jarring when the thing is, like, immediately upon you, you don't realize how close it is because it never stops walking. Um, yeah, it's nuts. It's super good. 
Uh, it's super different, <laughs> but it's really, really good. Have you ever seen the movie Teeth? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a, I mean, kind of, it, it's a I little like that. I think in retrospect, that. that's the scariest movie of all time. Oh, yeah, because it's like... <laughs> I think I'd rather, I'd rather have Freddy Krueger meet me in my dream, have Michael Myers butcher my entire family, and babysitter included, yeah. than me, or meet Jason in the woods one-on-one -on -one in a fucking... In a weaponless fight yeah. before I have a girl's vagina grow teeth and bite my penis off. <laughs> yeah, talk. You're I like agree. you're like in there and you're like, man, I've made it. This is it. I Hell think yeah. I need to change the number one on my list. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's number three for me. So for number three, I have Friday the thirteenth, part eight, Jason takes Manhattan specifically. Okay. <laughs> it was just because until then we have kind of I, I was a real big Friday the 13th fan growing up um, I'm real big on slasher films mm -hmm. those are like my forte for horror um, and Jason Takes Manhattan specifically uh, I, I liked that one the most out of all of them Honestly, just because uh, Jason belonged to Camp Crystal Lake throughout the entire series, yeah, up until Part Eight, and now Part Eight was the very last one of the Friday the Thirteenth series before yeah. it, uh, before uh, Platinum Dunes sold it to uh, New Line because mm -hmm. it used to be a Platinum Dunes film, and then they had sold or uh, Paramount Platinum Dunes, whatever. Um, it was Paramount, and then Paramount sold the rights to New Line. And then New Line from there started, uh, they made Jason Goes to Hell first. And then uh, they didn't sell them the rights to the Friday the 13th name, though, so that's why they started calling it, like, Jason Goes to Hell, yeah. uh, Jason X, and then Freddy vs. Jason. Okay. And then uh, New, New Line sold the rights back to uh, Paramount. And then I don't think... Paramount did anything with it though, and then fucking, I want to say New Line. Uh, I think the Friday the Thirteenth remake film is a New Line film, if I'm not mistaken. I think they ended up doing the remake though. But anyway, uh, Part Eight, Jason Takes Manhattan was the first time he uh, left Camp Crystal Lake, and it was is my favorite kill ever just because it's so simple he like got in a boxing match with old dude on the top of this fucking building in manhattan and just punched this motherfucker's head clean off dude and it just goes <laughs> like this, this dude boxed his heart out against jason and jason just ate everything like a fucking champ because dude just, you know you can't kill him even if like hey he watched his fucking mom get beheaded bro like Nothing's gonna hurt worse than that pain, <laughs> physical or mental. Like, yeah. just, you don't beat that, bro. And he just like with no effort. He didn't even cock his hand back. He just like punched forward. He like one inch punched this dude's face through the back of his head, and it, it just like it, it broke clean, dude. It was like someone chopped it. It was weird. <laughs> But, dude, that was my favorite fucking kill ever. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> All right, Brian, so, Brian, so what do you got? So for number three, I got The Thing, which you've never seen. I've never uh, seen The Thing either. Oh, it's so good. It's one of the ones where, again, it's not um, CGI. They're using practical effects, but it's, it, I don't know. It, it's got a really good group. It's kind of like Alien because um, it is an alien. Um, it has landed in Antarctica, and they're doing – you know, whatever scientists are doing in Antarctica, and all of a sudden they unearthed, uh, no. Oh, they, they had, like, this other group was on Antarctica from another country, and it makes its way to them, and it's a shapeshifter, so basically it takes the shape of whatever it wants, and then it kills them, and it's, I don't know, it's just a really good movie. Um, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. They got but, a remake, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. But they did a remake, but it's not really... It's supposed to be a prequel. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Like, um, the very last scene of it is the very first scene of the original one. Okay. And the original um, is the one with Kurt but, Russell, right? Yeah, Kurt Russell. Okay. It's, it's really good. I, I recommend it. It's, um, you know, done in the 80s, but it's, 
it's kind of a terrifying thing where you're on, you're very secluded out in Antarctica where no one's going to come to you for months and months. And then you just have this thing there and it's killing people. Um, and you don't know what it is and you, and you don't know who it is. And it's, it's pretty good. It's a really good movie. Yeah, I've been meaning to check it out. Never invaded Earth. Like, what do you think? Like, they, what would they want from us? Uh, definitely not COVID nineteen. Yeah, dude. They, no, no, I honestly, I don't think. Like, I don't think aliens have. They're just like, bro. They're waiting for us to fuck this whole thing up. Yeah, and they're gonna. And they'll move in. Yeah, like they shared technologies with us because I do not believe that. <laughs> I absolutely don't believe humans are capable of coming up with some of the shit that we've come up with. I don't yeah. believe that thought. Yeah, I, don't know. It's, I can see that. I mean, like... How do you know what you don't know? Like, if, like no one... You can't just, like... Yes. Yeah. So the shit don't... It don't work like that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it don't. You can't teach yourself how to create, like... Just like something purpose. that just doesn't exist like that. Like, I know people invent things every day, but, like, I just... <laughs> nah, dude. Well, that's... Like, <laughs> pyramids? Can we talk about that? No. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a three-hour... Yeah. Uh, ...thing you can watch on YouTube. Uh, how we can get into it on the next one. Um... <laughs> But for so for number two for me is The Shining. Um, you okay. want to talk about like tone and just the feel of the movie, man? It's all that and just dude, Jack Nicholson is so fucking scary in this movie. Like, yeah, you can just you, like just getting to watch his like slow slip into madness and like all the weird things that go on with the little boy. And then, man, one of the freakiest things I've seen still is when he goes into the one room and that old lady yeah. is in the bathtub, bro. Like, that is still is just, like, etched in my brain. Is like, you better double check if you ever see a chick in a bathtub waiting for you. Like, think <laughs> twice, double check, rub your eyes, make sure it's definitely real or at least not about to kill you. So, yeah, dude, it's just so, it's so well done, man. I mean, Kubrick does such a good job of, like, all of it. Like, the blood coming down the hallway is just an iconic yeah. shot. Um, all of it, like him just sitting at his desk even and starting to kind of like you see him like starting to like freak out and things like that and then uh, it's just so good man so good so yeah it's my it's my number two i once heard jonah hill make a joke about a girl being on her period and <laughs> being, like, doors from the shining and i've never i've never not thought about that like <laughs> i ever like see that scene play like even see that scene in the trailer of that dr sleep movie yeah yeah and I thought about it then too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a part of that. Now. Must be Shark Week. Yeah. <laughs> the worst fucking thing in the world. Like, would you would you know it started if you were in the water, and then like be, next thing you know you just got bit and you don't know what blood <laughs> blew up part of your body. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just got it eaten. Like, <laughs> that's tough, bro. Oh, man. Yeah. Nuts, bro. So when you got um, a number two over there? For, for number two, I got Halloween, uh, the original John Carpenter 1978 film. Okay. Even though, in all actuality, it's probably one of the worst horror movies like ever made. I mean, all the, all the original Halloween movies are absolute dog shit if we can talk about it <laughs> they are all they are all very poorly put together but that's 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 what they had to work with back then you right. know what i'm saying so yeah. when you watch, the first film they actually recorded it and uh they didn't have the they did a test screening for it and no one would buy it because it uh it didn't have any music so it didn't have the yeah 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 and they said the movie wasn't scary, so they didn't really want to just ditch the project and take that out. So they went back and fucked with it a little bit, and they came up with that with that theme and put it on the movie and retest screened it. And then they got like they thought the movie was the scariest movie they'd ever seen. It's crazy so how music did, can do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and did really well. And. Uh, Halloween. Halloween was never my favorite growing up, which is weird because I have a big ass Michael Myers tattoo now. Yeah. So, um, 
But my mom always had this really fucked up inside joke that Michael Myers was my real dad. <laughs> and, dude, there was one time when I was, like, five, my grandma got me into, uh, co like, collecting horror film stuff. Like, right under where I'm recording, or I have my phone set up, I have this little, uh... Fucking, so Jason was always my favorite, but one... My grandma was really... really she lived in a duplex, and my... My mom and my aunt lived above, uh, right above her, and there was a stairwell that connected to like the back doors, and then the front porches had two little stoops, and we st the, and then on the side of the house was the driveway, and then this big field that we had, and then on the other side of that field were the back of these. Uh, there was a street right there, and the houses faced with the back of the house faced the side of my grandma's house so the like behind their garage was our side yard so one day our, my mom sits my sister and i we still like watching the snowfall from the top uh window in the dining room because it would look like you were like going up in an elevator you know what i'm saying yeah, if the yeah. snow was coming down so hard so she makes us start watching the snow and then we like she's like oh i think i see something w what is that and then like we look and we fucking see Michael Myers oh, no. coming out from the side of one of these goddamn garages. <laughs> and, dude, I mean, like, I just lose my shit. Like, oh, my God, no. No, 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 what the fuck? No, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, Mommy, what are we going to do? My, my grandma is right downstairs. We call her we call her me, Mommy, because uh, my brother Christian could not pronounce grandmother. And somehow he fucking landed on me, Mommy. <laughs> And they thought that was the most adorable thing in the world, and everyone just called her that. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm, the first thing I think I was like, "No, he's gonna go downstairs and fucking kill me, mommy." So we uh, you gotta go save her. <laughs> yeah, my first thought is go down the back steps. You know what I'm saying? Like that's genius. He's yeah. not gonna. He doesn't know about the back steps, dude. We go down the back steps, and this motherfucker is coming up them, and I'm just like sick. Oh no! <laughs> so we, we go back up. And we run out the front, and I mean, like, bro, this is the worst day of my like my worst nightmare has come to life, and. We we open the door and we're like, we're yelling we're screaming we jump in my grandma's bed with her we're now behind her and uh, I'm like crying and I'm hiding my face behind her and then my mom finally like f finessed her way around Michael Myers I don't know how <laughs> and then, um, she 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 comes in through uh, the back door and then is like coming up to us and then she's like. Oh my! She's like, "Don't worry, you guys gotta, you guys gotta uh, protect me, mommy." Blah, blah, blah. And saying some other shit, and then my um, fucking my dad, Michael Myers, <laughs> <laughs> comes up and snatches my mom up by her hair. Oh fuck and, that! Like drags her to the dining <laughs> room, and bro, we can't see. We can't. We cannot see. Like. <laughs> But we, we, like, I'm just picturing him murdering my fucking mother. Because we, he, like, he's pretending to do it. He really is. And we hear her reacting to it. And, bro. And then after, like, it just fucked me up. And then afterward, he he come around. And my uh, my grandma started saying, Billy, stop it. All right, Billy, Billy. And then I'm looking at his eyes and then it dawned on me right away and I was just like, Does that you does you Uncle Billy? And then, dude, it just oh my god, it's just the most traumatic fucking experience in the fight, bro. Sounds terrible. It was rotten, dude. Oh, man. What can you possibly do to your fucking five year old bro? Right. It was so fucked up. It's so good. Because, like, when you so, are five, you do think yeah. shit like that. Like, I've already mapped this out in my head for, like, whenever I need to yeah. go out back and be a Power Ranger and fight the bad guy. Like, he won't think the back steps. There his ass is. Dude, oh my god. It just. Fuck me up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it was because of that. Like, I couldn't watch Halloween movies growing up because it just terrified me. It always just, like, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to it. I, I thought it. it was the scariest thing I'd ever seen was Halloween when I was a kid. So 
I love Jason because I could tolerate watching it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I watch those films by myself. You haven't like, had yeah. the picture of him killing your fucking mom. <laughs> Would you say you haven't had the like, picture yeah, of killing your mom, murdering my fucking mom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so good. I can so I could watch Jason movies fine, but dude, um, no, nah, but I love like Michael's my favorite out of everything, man. I love Halloween movies. So seventy eight is my um, is my number two. The OG. My number two is uh, basically. Very close to number three is actually Alien. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I, some I of the Alien in so fucking long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Um, I don't know, man. It's also it's another thing where it's, I, I basically saw it here. It was just on Showtime like two days ago too, and I looked past it like, do I watch Alien? I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched it so long though. Now I kind of yeah. wish I. Watched it. It's my number one, so I mean we can really get into the motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I love it because it's a. It's to me, it's a lot like the thing where you're you're isolated on this, you know, the spaceship. Spaceship. Yeah. yeah, and there's this alien that's going into your the people you know the best, mm-hmm. and it's you know killing them. It's just the scene where they're on the table and it pops up through yeah. the body. Yeah, yep. it's and so it's, crazy. It's and that's the other thing too is like back then we talked about practical effects a little bit. Um, they didn't have a, like they didn't have the CGI and all that to work with, so they couldn't have like you know just xenomorphs running around all over the place like you see yeah and like Alien versus Predator and things like that. But it's like the music you know with like the uh, the alert siren going off and like yep. the flashing red light all the time and then like you don't get to see it too often, but you know that it's fucking everybody up. And yep. you could still like see the mouth of it here and there, but just those razor sharp teeth, and it's so good, man. And Ripley, dude, she's man, she's gotta be. She should have made her a goaded list. Like now that we're uh-huh. now that we're this far uh-huh. along, uh-huh. dude, yeah. she is such a G. Um, yeah, it's such a good movie, man. And then like, to do like the end, the, the end, end, like when she's like on the escape pod. And that motherfucker's just sitting there sleeping. Like, bro, what? Oh, my God. Like, that takes you back to, like, a quiet place a little bit where you're like, dude, if I, like, sneeze wrong, it's chops. Like, yep. yeah, it's so good, man. I love it. And just, like, I don't know. There's so many different good scenes. Like, the one where the dude's looking for his cat is super good where you can, like, hear it hitting the chains and shit like that. And it's just fire, man. I love it. Yeah. I agree. I, I think it's it's great. Like you said, the they didn't use. I don't know because you you think if that movie would have been done in the late nineties, early two thousands, it would have been all CGI and it just wouldn't have the same effect. Yeah, it makes like, you, and makes you you got to hide something like that. You got to direct better. You know, tr- yep. kind of try and hide it, but also keep the audience like engaged. And then like the set design and shit, because they're obviously they're on a spaceship. Like it's not just like I don't know. It's so good to me. I love it. Yeah. I'm a big what, sci-fi uh, good, though. Were you a fan of the Alien vs. Predator movies, then? I mean, they were cool, but, like, this one... This one... I mean, even the second one, man, it starts to... You see yeah. it even with, like, the Terminator, which um, is in one of my honorable mentions, where it's, like, a, just a force of nature kind of thing. Like, yeah. it's a horror movie, and then they start turning it, and you can see it with a lot of these franchises as far as, like, uh, Friday the 13th and... Maybe not Halloween as much, but um, they start to turn into, like, action movies as opposed to, like, your horror movies where it's, like, your slasher movies turn into, well, we gotta go fight it. We, you know, you get the big guys with the yeah. guns and things like that. Um, even Predator, man. Like, Predator, they they stand more of a chance. It's more of an action movie than, like, a horror flick. But as that even kind of goes on, it turns more and more into an action film, so... I mean, I did not like it. That. For what it was, it was sweet. I feel that we even watched Chucky turn into a complete fucking comedy. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how to do that. I mean, <laughs> right, but they did somehow. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's it's weird how those things kind of morph into whatever they are. Like Terminator, what is it, Salvation or Genesis or all of those ones are just, yeah. if you go back to like the roots of like the first one, it's not that. Like it's just some dude and some chick trying to fight this crazy ass robot. And that's yeah. kind of what Alien turns into, also. Even in, like as soon as even even in the second one, it turns into that. And then we have the best movie that was ever made, T two, 
Judgment Day. Yeah, dude, I feel it. Terminator Two is the shit. Yeah. Judgment Day is the shit, dude. With Liquid Metal, Liquid Metal is fucking dope. Yeah, he might yeah. be that. That and Empire Strikes Back are probably my two favorite sequels ever. So, like he's straight. probably he's one. Of, Liquid Metal is one of my definitely in my top five of movie villains of all time. Mm-hmm. Gotta be, yeah. But what's your number one horror movie? For number one, I actually have the the. 2018 Halloween. Okay. Because I, um, I, it's gotten so out of hand, dude. Like the the original one was produced and directed by John Carpenter, who mm-hmm. had an idea to just have a standalone film that didn't, you know, it was just about a dude who was stalking people and right. fucking got away with it. That was it. That literally, and and the movie did great. So they just they wanted to do a sequel, and he. Uh, Mustafa Akkad, no, actually Mustafa Akkad produced the first one. Uh, John Carpenter created and directed it. And then fucking, you know, the second one came out and John Carpenter was not a part of that one. And he didn't want a sequel to be made and they made one anyway. This, that sequel actually ended up turning out really good. They just continued it from that night. It It's literally like, it's almost it, it, it seamlessly like they filmed one big ass move with movie yeah. and just cut it in halves, but it, it, it's it's not how they did it. Um, but after that, when Halloween three season of the witch came out, it didn't even have anything to do with Michael Myers because they wanted to take it into this direction where there was going to be uh, a different kind of villain every Halloween. And when they saw how mad fans got that Michael Myers was not in Halloween three, they were just like, oh shit. We got a fucking time to go back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got Halloween 4. And then with Halloween 4, they went with this idea of fucking introducing... Um, like the spawn? This, like yeah. weird cult idea that yeah. like Michael Myers was possessed by this curse of the thorn thing. And then after that, it, was like, it just it got so out of whack. And then so like we got down to Halloween H2O and... Oh, well, in in part four, they established that Jamie Lee Curtis has died, mm-hmm. and that was Michael's sister, but she had a daughter named Jamie, who was adopted by a, a different family, and Michael was coming back to kill her because this curse of the thorn dictated that he had to kill all of his family yeah. to, to not be able to die. And so Jamie Lee Curtis was dead, but somehow we end up, at age two O, and Jamie Lee Curtis is back alive and has a son <laughs> instead of a daughter now. And Mike was back to kill her, so we like they have like five separate universes because none of these films are in continuity with one another. So the reason why I favor twenty eighteen so much is because it even redcons part two, and it takes it from a perspective that. Uh, at the end of the original Halloween, that Michael did not get away, and that he was arrested by the police. And then, uh, have you guys seen the 2018? Uh-uh. I've seen most of it. Okay. So, um, uh, Michael goes away to, to jail for 40 years. And then when they were gonna, he's being studied by a dude who was, um, doctor's uh, or uh, uh, Michael's doctor he was like his understudy and he kind of took over Dr. Loomis's work after he passed away and when they come to the conclusion that Michael is there's no reason to keep him anymore because he's he's incapable of you know what I'm saying like any yeah. kind of like he's not going to make it like make any progress with where he's he's a silent mute dude you know yeah he's aggressive and he's unpredictable he's a murderer and no psyche help and shit like that is doing anything so blase blase but they tie everything it really well in and you know what i'm saying and now we're gonna get two more films out of it which is sweet and john carpenter's on board for all of these and just back to using uh practical effects which they're using the way that they approached it with aging this mask because that's a huge thing it's it's yeah. you know michael doesn't have a voice he only has a face so you can't fuck with that face too much it's not like yeah. for, uh nightmare on elm street which completely flopped because you know like robert england had a voice and he's like one of the only killers who would talk besides chucky yeah yeah 
he, uh, he had practical makeup on, so it's not like he had a mask either. So when you get a different actor, they brought in uh, Jack, Jackie Earl Haley, and that didn't go good either. So things like that are super, like, you got to protect things like that. And I feel like they're doing a real good job of protecting Michael and preserving it and then, like, giving us some super badass new stuff to enjoy, too. Yeah, I'd say he's got to be, like, one of the best villains, too, because, like you said, he doesn't talk. And that just amplifies how, you know, kind of scary the whole thing is. And he's just fucking, he's just there. Every time you look out a window, he, there he is. And it's just, it's creepy. Like it, like you said, it's, they went from a thought. Creepy. And it's yeah. creepier when you don't think that he's supernatural. Because that's yeah. where, like, that's where all those extra movies, after part two, that's the direction they went with. Like, yeah, he's some, he's supernatural, he's cursed. He's all, like, that's not scary to me, dude. No. What's scary is thinking that this stalker-ass dude wearing a mask yeah. keeps yeah. following this girl home from high school and walking past her house and somehow keeps getting in people's back doors and slicing them up because that could happen to somebody. That's yeah, yeah, that's, it's in the realm really of, like, weird. possibility for sure. Yeah, it, it's... Yeah, I'm with you there. That that to me is where it's the creepiest is the non supernatural part of it. Um, so my number one is already on Kyle's list was The Shining. Um, it's one of the rare exceptions for me that the movie is better than the book. And Stanley Kubrick, bro. Yeah, he he does a really good job. The um, only thing that I, I don't think Stephen King was big on was the fact that he put Jack Nicholson there. Because, like, uh, in Stephen King's mind, he wanted someone who just seemed like a normal guy mm -hmm. who went crazy. Whereas Jack Nicholson, he kind of plays the crazy guy in a lot of stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, this guy could definitely go crazy. I could see it. But I love the, you know, I, I love the direction they went where you see him working. And you see him typing. And then at the end, it shows it. And it's just all work. No play makes Jack a dull boy. And he's just typed that over and over and over. And that's all he's done. It's like, yo, this guy's been crazy for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Like, it didn't just happen. Like, it's been going on. And um, one thing that, if you guys haven't read the book either, at the end of the book, like, you see whatever has possessed, basically what's possessed the manor they're in, or the hotel, just kind of flies off in the distance like you, you don't really see that in the movie wait it flies it's just away kinda... yeah, yeah it's weird like <laughs> the way i think it's described in the book is like a swarm of bees like kind of flies out and you're like what the shit is that so like the end of the book the whole book is creepy until you get to the end and you're just like what the fuck stephen king like this makes no sense yeah I didn't give a but, shit. Um, yeah but the movie is just man it's so I don't know, man. It, it's just, again, it's to me, it's one of those psychological things where is you're in captivity and you're isolated with two other people, and all of a sudden all this shit has gone down at this hotel, and then you're there with it, and just, yeah, it's just a creepy setting to be in. Another thing is, like, a viewer, like, they got, like, they radio the cop, and you're, like, as a viewer, like, holding out hope, like, all right, this dude's on his way. It's all good. He's going to get there. And as soon as this dude gets there, he just takes an axe to the chest, bro. Like, <laughs> like just hope is gone. It's chopped. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. That part is rough because you, like you said, you're expecting that help. Yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> it's, it's so good, man. Um, so yeah, so those those are our lists. This is dope. I need to do some homework. Uh, for all you Impact fans that didn't know, your boy Trey is a straight student when it comes to horror movies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My boy knows his shit. Um, it's just like YouTube, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so number five for me is Get Out and then A Quiet Place. Number three is It Follows and then The Shining and number one is Alien. Yep. And then I had number five, The Conjuring. Number four was Signs. Three, Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, Halloween 1978 for number two, and then number one was Halloween 2018. And then I had uh, five, A Quiet Place, four, It, the whatever newest first part is, uh, three, The Thing, two, Alien, and one, The Shining. You were um, just talking about being in captivity. I was, uh, my brother texted my dad the other day and said that we should watch this movie that's on Netflix. 
called The Platform. Mm-hmm. Have you guys watched that yet? No, I've no. seen it like uh, advertised though. Like it's on like the main dashboard or whatever. Up until the end of that movie, I think it's a I think it's a good movie. It's a crazy concept. I, I just I if there's a deep message in that ending, I I sure as shit did not pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when shit like that happens, dude. Because I don't know yeah. if I'm just like it, it makes me feel stupid. Because I'm just like, dude, like this, this it genuinely to me just did not make sense. I. I wanted something else out of the end of that movie because it had a. I personally really liked the build. My dad was pissed at that whole movie, but I, <laughs> I was like, dude, that does that needed a different ending. But uh, everyone has their own interpretation of shit. But I think that's worth a watch. Besides the last minute, what so, um <laughs> other than like that one? You got any uh, honorable mentions? Mm, honorable mentions. For me, I got Evil Dead. It's super good. Evil um, Dead. I love the Evil Dead. Yeah. That, uh, Cabin um, in the Woods. Even the originals were crazy. Oh, yeah. It's got, I, the, the, I original the original two are my favorite. Kid, yeah, Bruce the original Campbell two. Ones. So, and that was... When they came out with the the reboot of that one, I think that's, I think that's my favorite reboot film, mm-hmm. is Evil Dead. Yeah. Because they still stuck with very, very, very practical, gory. Yeah. Like, that was one of the goriest bloody films I've ever seen. Right, and it was all <laughs> practical effects and things like that. Like, watching, like, the demons, like, turn into nothing and, like, worms and maggots and stuff. Like, just, like, that fast yeah. forward of makeup and all it, that, dude. They do such an told, awesome job of it. it. It filled plot holes in the story before, or that there that were, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um... And then one of my favorite aspects about it, and it's something that I don't know if a lot of people notice or not, but one of my big things, it's really not a big thing for me, but it's its a big thing for horror films. And I, I don't know if it's if it's a thing that works, but I feel like all horror films, like growing up, and it's not so much anymore, but slasher films, it was it's, it's kind of like tradition that like sex sells and sex, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like you... you it was always some kind of love story or there was always a, a a couple in the film that end up, you know what I'm saying? Fucking it up. And the love story in this film, it was, there there was no nudity in the film. There were, there weren't any couples in the film. It was between a brother and a sister. And I thought that was an interesting dynamic for the film because it's a reboot of a movie that was based off of, uh, they changed that because it was like a, a, like three couples that went to this cabin, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead it was just a group of friends and two of them happened to be brother and sister. So it, did, it wasn't dependent. Uh, it didn't waste a single move or minute on, you know, like unnecessary nudity or some, some pointless sex scene that, you know, that the movie didn't need. And it, it yeah. just told good story and just had hella gore, which was awesome as yeah. fuck. But, like, that movie, I think, is the best reboot ever for shit like that. And then another one I got is uh, Cabin in the Woods, man. That movie's just super ridiculous. That's um, a real good one. Hereditary. I mean, I gotta give love to my A24 movie. You know, it's kind of older, but I feel like never really got a whole lot of shine. And they made a lot of movies where the wrong turn movies. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. The yep. first one. I never thought that those were bad. I thought the first one was the best one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, all together, I, I thought that all of them were pretty enjoyable, and they were all gory. Right. And it was just, I mean, it, it's met what it said, wrong turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah for real. <laughs> yeah, it was creepy. Uh, Scream, and then uh, I didn't, like you mentioned it a little bit, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, you got to give uh, Freddy a little shout out. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, dude, I grew up, I was real big on Scream. I love Scream. Mm. Uh, one of the coolest things about Scream is that it's, uh, David Arquette was in the Scream movies. Yeah. And David Arquette became a pro wrestler recently over, like, the past two yeah. years. And, like, really hit the indies and, like, I've done plenty of shows with him and, like, I've gotten to hang out with him and shit like that and, you know, like, take pictures and just chill and just, we've done promos. And, like, one day I was at a show and I was filming this promo that wasn't scripted, and he thought it was super funny. He was like, hey, let's refilm that, but I want to be a part of it this time. And I was like, shit, are you, are you serious? Like, yeah. was and then me and David are kept at this video, and I'm like, this is so fucking random and yeah. weird and cool as shit, because David Arquette 
is a real ass Hollywood actor who I grew up watching as mm -hmm. a kid, and now he's like. No, whatever you just did, redo it, because I want to do it with you. And I'm like, dude, this is sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Uh, that's cool. Uh, dude, I, think I, was, I, was, I was Ghostface like four years in a row. Oh, yeah. A I think everybody had a yeah. mask. Oh. Like, it was just like <laughs> yeah, a thing like, you had to have. Yeah. Um, a couple I had, um, The Witch, Yeah. Uh, Werewolf in London, um, or an American Werewolf in London. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and then I put along the same lines the original Friday the Thirteenth, the original Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Um, and then Silence of the Lambs is probably one of the better movies on the list, but it's not really a horror movie. It's creepy, but it's not really a horror movie. Yeah, it's more like a, a thriller, thrilling tension. Yeah. Yeah. Just like yeah, I feel it. Go ahead. Uh, I watched The Witch, and The Witch was good. I thought The Witch was really, really, like... It's super good, man. It was, like... I love it. <laughs> movies that are, like, striking to, like, see, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like, it's hard to explain what you're watching, which is, like, oh, my God. I went and saw it in theaters. It's so good watching it. I went and saw it in theaters, and we talked about it on a past, a past podcast. Um, once it, like, finished... It was me and, my, me and my two brothers, and there was, like, an older couple because it was, like, the matinee. And a lot of, like, people, you know, like, our age don't get out, like, matinees and stuff. So it was, like, an older crowd. <laughs> and the, the couple in front of me, when they, like, hit the credits, the dude in front of me was just, like, he looks to his wife, and he's, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'm, like, that's the movie, bro. Yes. It's, like, just, oh, <laughs> Like, you just feel dirty after you watch it, man. It's good. I, I love it. There was a there's this old movie called Sleepaway Camp that I think this had the sh most striking ending. I guess there was so in the film there's this, there's a camp and there's this uh, person person that everyone thinks is a girl the entire time and mm. she just like passes it off to be. And at the end of the movie, I mean, after going off on this killing spree, she just decides to reveal herself and like no one behold, it's a fucking dude. <laughs> and it, it starts. It starts not in this face. And this face was frozen. This was not a person holding this face. So it just it, this person with long hair is just like ah. And then it makes <laughs> sound, dude. And, ah, ah. and then it pans out, and this is whole naked dude, and they showed his dick and everything. And he's just standing there, dude, doing ah. And his eyes are so open and looking as sharp left as they can go. It fucked me up as a kid. I was like. <laughs> Oh, that's how that's how I'm gonna die. If Michael didn't get me, it's sure as shit gonna be a naked dude that looks like Weird Al Yankovic. Right, with He's making that right penis. This is fucked up. That was dope. That was a lot of fun, man. Um, all right, so we'll wrap it up the way we always do with yay or nay. Um, just some quick little fast questions with uh for you. So, yay so, or nay? So. Burgers are better than tacos. Nah. All right. <laughs> Yay or nay? You could win a tag team title match with Nacho Libre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Not> for that. <laughs> Yay or nay? Hot Cheetos and cream cheese are a better combo than PB and J. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I'm about to say. <laughs> we went to high school together. He knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay or nay, you would rather fly than be able to go invisible. Damn. <laughs> oh, nay. Nay? Nay. You'd rather go invisible. invisible. All right, man, this one's a little tricky. Um, so you, pretend you're a damsel in, in distress. Um, okay. Yay or nay, you would trust Dominic Toretto to save you. <laughs> More than you would trust Shrek or Donkey. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> Did you see the way they got Fiona, bro? You got me fucked up. <laughs> My man dove across a freeway to catch uh, Letty coming out of that car, man. It oh landed on a God. freaking moving car, bro. Like, what? It's just ridiculous. But no, I, yeah. I feel it, man. Shrek and Donkey, man. I feel like <laughs> that's our first L for Dominic Toretto, I think, ever. 
<laughs> yeah, I think he's like 13 and 1. Literally the Shrek and Donkey. No, oh my God. But yeah, Shrek and Donkey for the win, bro. So, yeah, that's been us. Uh, Trey, uh, let them know how they can find you. Um, go ahead and just hype yourself up a little bit. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Trey Miguel every Tuesday night on Access TV at 8 p.m. Watch me and the Rascals on Impact Wrestling, tearing it up, getting the treehouse all smoky and kicking it like we always do. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun. Be sure to check my boy out. I'm Kyle. That's Trey. This is BMAC as always. This is the Adventurous Podcast. Remember to love each other, love yourselves.